Okay, well, it's 4-2. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here on Palm Sunday. Beautiful weather outside. I'm much grateful and appreciative that you can join me uh, today uh, on this beautiful, uh, blessed uh, day. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some updates, and uh, we're going to have Donna Heatrick, our esteemed dietitian in uh, the area, going to talk about uh, eating healthy while you're social uh, distancing. But I really want to make this uh, session um, a, more of a question and answer. Oh, I didn't make that last few couple of times. And I really hope that um, at the end that you all can ask questions. I will try to unmute you. If not, put it in the chat about your questions. And Donna and I will try to answer the best that we can. Just know that everything is an evolving situation. It changes daily and almost by the hour. But um, I try to sort out to the noise as much as I can, all the misinformation, and, and to help you all get the right information and uh, avoid misinformation as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start. And I'm so grateful you're here with me. This will also be a recording as well. So we're all in this together. So today, I want to uh, give a quote by uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, today, start with one word that you've been hearing or using lately. Change is meaning. Perhaps instead of being locked down or feeling trapped, like your freedoms have taken away, replace it with grounded. How does that make you feel? The term grounding is synonymous with getting out of your head and into your heart space. It's all about rooted and firm, like a strong tree that weathers any storm, uh, that weather any storm uh, and it is, is rooted and firm. And it's a phrase that beckons us to walk away from the noise and of the news and to tap into things that make us human. Love, joy, connection, planning, dreaming, and creation. It's not about freedom we have been stripped of, but the freedom our undistracted heart now have to relish in. Tony Robbins, March 29th. So I gather all different sources from the Virginia Department of Health, the CDC, WHO, and multiple evidence-based medical literature and sort through all as much information as much as possible. It's probably about like between six to eight hours worth. And it's good for me as a, as a, a One America Health Network correspondent as well as for my patient. And I'm really trying to be here to be as a service to you all. So um, what's the definition? Just really, very briefly, I see this interchange um, a lot. And, um, and I hope that to verify this is virus is called SARS-CoV-2, meaning coronavirus causing frequent outbreak. Uh, th this is the one that is present right now. It's called SARS-CoV-2. The clinical syndrome and the manifestation is called COVID-19 or coronal virus disease from the SARS-CoV-2. So what's the, some updated myths and, uh, myths and facts? As you know, I've been doing, this is the, I believe the third time I'm doing it, and I'm not repeating things. If you have attended the last previous uh, webinars, I touch upon some myth, and I wanna add some uh, recent um, um, information. Remember, this is an evolving data. What I say today may not even be, uh, prevalent in the next hour, the next day. So um, the, the first one is COVID-19 is just like the flu. It's actually false. It is not like the flu. It has some common symptoms as the flu, but it's not like the flu. It has uh, a more, um, uh, it is more infectious than the flu. It can, the severity of it is 10 times more than the flu causing uh, death. And uh, it can come on very, very quickly. And um, so the next claim, most people are not, as not asymptomatic carrier. It's really inconclusive. What we're seeing now is that um, the people that are asymptomatic or pe that does not have these symptoms are the ones that are actually um, um, be are infectious to the community. And this virus is, is very challenging in that uh, you may not know you have it, and you may um, spread that to your loved one or to the community. It's not like you don't have symptoms, you don't have it. The next one is the virus live in certain fomites or uh, inanimate objects. That is true. And I'll, I'll have a slide that will show you 
that uh, how long it lives in, in steel or plastic and cardboards and, uh, um, and different surfaces. Uh, virus, the virus is airborne. It's actually a little inconclusive. Um, I'll have a slide that we're going to talk about masks and um, its uses and uh, why we need to wear masks and what happened to the, uh, your droplets while uh, you, uh, when, uh, when somebody sneezes. So it's really inconclusive. So it's not yes or no. Uh, it can become airborne when somebody uh, cough or sneeze and then the, the small droplets can remain uh, in the air for about two to three hours. But you don't, you're not sure whether that is really what's causing the infection. But we do know that what's causing the infection is from the droplet, and then somebody bring, uh, touches their hands on the droplets and bring it to their face. So it's not like you, you have, if the, if the droplets are airborne and you walk through it, uh, um, but you, you, it has to go to either your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Um, only uh, The next claim is only the elderly and the immunocompromised die from disease. Again, it's inconclusive. Um, the elderly and the immunocompromised or people with heart disease or lung disease or diabetic or, or um, um, diabetic or cancer um, are more susceptible to developing more severe uh, symptoms and that they are and and that they are more at risk to uh, um, with mortality. Uh, but the young, we are now seeing that uh, younger uh, population. Uh, can also have severe symptoms as well. And uh, we have seen at least a few deaths um, uh, in the US as well as um, uh, in um, Virginia. Let's more talk about the new things that we're finding out about transmission uh, of uh, this. That co um, actually it should be uh, COVID-19 is a new disease. And we're still learning about it. it is, we're learning about it on the fly as much as we can. Infected individual can shed the virus 48 hours before symptoms develop. So they don't know that they're infectious um, at that point. Um, the droplets from the back of the throat become aerosolized and hang in the air. And I just discussed about that for about two to three hours after the infected individual leaves, especially, and it's especially in an enclosed space like plain trained conference room or in, in, or in a room that doesn't have very good ventilation. Person to person spread, that's what we know is the primary uh, uh, transmission is person to person and is by droplets from, um, the, back, from the back of the throat. Uh, it's between people who are in close contact with one another within the six feet um, distance. It's through respiratory droplets from an infected person who sneezes or cough the droplet lands in the mouth and nose of people who are nearby, and then you inhale it through the lungs. Uh, and I have a slide that shows that it can be on inanimate objects or fomite, and people are thought to be contagious when they're most symptomatic, but that is also a change now because they can be contagious when they're not symptomatic as well. Some spread may be possible before people show symptoms, and you'll hear me say that a lot. Um, and shedding, uh, shedding of the SARS-CoV two or the virus that thousand more than the flu itself. That's why it, it, it is a very worrisome um, disease because it's a respiratory disease which tend to shed and is more infectious than the flu. So how, how is, uh, the, what is the spread of SARS? Um, the um, R0, which stands for basic reproduction number, means the contagiousness of the virus. For SARS-CoV-2, it's between two to uh, two to three. So that means that one person, one infected person with uh, COVID-19 can actually pass it to two to three people. Versus the flu, uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So one infected person with the flu uh, only uh, infect about another person. So this is COVID-19 here, which is um, above Ebola and is uh, way below measles. Uh, measles is uh, airborne. So what's the diagnosis from COVID-19? It's a, a by, uh, called PCR, polymerase chain reaction, primary method, where if you go get tested, you're gonna get like a long swab and they will put that through your nose to go to the back of the nasal pharynx to the back of the, uh, the sinuses right here and it's put in a medium 
here and it's sent to the lab. And I'm gonna show you where uh, in our region you can go get tested. Better Med has, uh, um, is now testing this um, on curbside. The duration of shedding of the virus is between 12 to 20 days. Uh, and again, you can shed it and not know that you have the virus. Um, my mom, shedding of the, this is more confusing. Shedding the virus may not equate to um, infection at this point. So we don't know how much shedding can cause uh, infection. Is it how, what is the viral load? Uh, and then we'll talk about serology, which is blood work to detect, um, to detect um, the antibody that if somebody is infected is now available. So transmission of this is, um, it is uh, uh, so I wanna say is statewide, 44% of those, uh, this is in Virginia, 40%, 44% of those diagnosed with COVID-19 are under 50. And there are more people being tested positive in their 20s and uh, than in their 70s. Scientists have suggested an individual own biology have more to do with how sick he or she becomes than the virus itself. This is very, very important. Please listen to this. Or that healthcare workers who are exposed to more of the virus than others might develop uh, severe cases. So when I say individual own biology, I mean that what we're seeing is the common denominator of individual that are infected with SARS-CoV-2 and develop uh, symptoms and um, even more severe is that they have uh, these conditions which lower your immunity. And these conditions are high blood pressure, heart disease, insulin resistance, di diabetes, and also obesity, as you put that uh, on here. These conditions lower your immunity and then lowers your immunity, therefore increasing increase your systemic inflammation, therefore put you more at risk to getting an infection. So just know that the cases, a lot of the cases are mild and it's not counted uh, in what the numbers that we see. So when we hear about uh, fatality, the fatality rate is probably a lot lower because a lot of cases are not being counted. So what's a clinical presentation? Again, updated. Uh, is that um, it's now involving more muscle aches, uh, stomach problem, uh, and diarrhea, nausea, vomiting. But the, the things that we hear the most is fever, cough, and shortness of the breath. What we're observing now in the U.S. and in Virginia is that these may not be the most common symptom and that more of uh, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Um, and that this is a very important picture here is that most people that do do are, are infected with, with uh, SARS-CoV-2, um, 70 to 80% of them are non-severe, non-severe. So about 20% uh, is severe and then that require hospitalization and about 5% of those are uh, require ICU. So some of the symptoms I have already uh, stated uh, on there, but I wanna I put on here loss of sense of smell is what we're observing uh, as well. And uh, how long does coronavirus uh, live on surfaces? Um, and so on uh, metal, such as doorknob, jewelry, and silverware is about five days. On glass, such as drinking glass, mirrors, and windows, up, up to about five days. Now remember, viruses can live on it. It doesn't mean that it's alive. Uh, it could be dead virus. They're just detecting this from the the, the nucleotide, the RNA that the virus have, but these could be dead virus. So when it's a dead virus, it may not uh, be um, cause uh, infection. Ceramics, like such as dishes, pottery, mugs, five days. Paper, uh, newspaper, magazine, up to five days. Wood, furniture and decking, four days. Plastic, milk bottle, uh, bus seats, elevator button, about two to three days. Stainless steel, refrigerator, pots, pans, sink, water bottle, two to three days. Cardboard, such as shipping boxes, about one day. Aluminum, uh, soda can, tin foil, water bottle, two to uh, eight hours. Copper, pennies and tea, uh, tea kettles and cookware, about four hours. Food and water, it doesn't seem to spread through the food and has not been found in water, so it's actually safe for you to get all your uh, delivery. So what you can do is disinfect all the surfaces and objects in the home daily with household cleaning agent. These uh, virus can be killed with um, hydrogen peroxide, 
can be uh, an uh, uh, 0.1% uh, bleach. And with Clorox, uh, at least 70% uh, uh, Clorox at this time. And also washing your hands for 20 minutes. It doesn't matter if it's warm or cold uh, water. And, um, and especially when you go into the uh, market, um, make sure that you take out the containers, um, the cardboard container. All right, next. All right, should I wear a mask? The bottom line is yes, you should wear a mask. More studies are coming out with that, uh, this and the, and the CDC is actually recommending that you wear a mask and a cloth mask. So surgical masks, however, which are the masks that you see the, the surgeon wear, do not uh, filter out the viral particles. The N95 masks uh, do. Um, the masks do not replace hand washing and social distancing, however. Sometimes it can give you a false sense of security. Um, a mask can get contamination due to readjusting with your hands. So it's very important if you do wear a mask, wash your hands first before you take off your mask or adjust your mask. Coronavirus can live on the mask, however, but it's more on the outside. The study of American Journal of Infectious Disease in 2015 showed that when we touch our face, we touch our face about an average of 15 times an hour. Um, so what, what the healthcare facility don't want you to do is stockpiling on masks because you're taking it away from healthcare uh, or workers that really uh, need these. So you should wear um, a cloth masks and we'll talk about that. Gloves are not substitute for washing hands. So uh, back to the basics of washing hands. However, due to asymptomatic or, or uh, people without any symptoms, but they're infectious transmission, masks offer some protection in crowded spaces so if you're going to go outside, go grocery shopping, do your errands, then you should wear a mask. Uh, why? Because you're, you're, it's not protecting you from uh, being uh, uh, getting sick, although it does offer some protection, it's more to protect you from others who may be infected. So you're really protecting yourself uh, more. In Asia, everyone wears a mask. There's a crowd psychology and a protection. If everyone wears a mask, individuals protect each other and reducing overall community transmission. If the sick have a mask on, it removes the stigma of one, uh, of one uh, wearing it. A friend of mine said that she went to the grocery store, she wore a mask and everybody stay away from her as if she's a leopard. We need to get over that. This, this, this is a new norm we're living in. This, you know, SARS-CoV-2 is going to stay. Yes, we're going to control the infection. It's going to be less, but it's going to be like the flu. It's going to come and go. We have to get over the stigma of wearing a mask, and we have to uh, um, adopt universal mask wearing as part of the solution, uh, along with social distancing and hand washing and uh, quarantine and isolation. Uh, a mask can also signal that it's not business as usual. The mask can be solidarity to bring the infection under control. If everyone in the community wears a mask, it could decrease transmission. We see that in uh, China and in Asia. Uh, surgical masks protect a bit more uh, than nothing at all, but we don't have enough surgical masks right now. I, um, the usual medical um, company I order from, they, they don't have any. I have to order on Amazon. Homemade mask now it, you can wear it, and it's better than no mask at all. And now uh, it, I went over that it, it doesn't pro it doesn't protect you from getting sick. It protects you uh, from others who may be infected because it's not like they they trying to infect you. They just don't know that they're infected. Um, flu studies show that mask can reduce spread by fifty percent. So on the left here is a cloth a mask. And this is a surgical mask, and this is an N95 mask uh, here, which blocks, uh, which can protect you from getting sick. This is what the healthcare workers uh, wear. This is what I wear in my office um, um, at this point. So this is a very important picture here that I'd like to point out in that if you wear a mask, uh, and this is somebody that is sick, and, and the cloth mask, this is 100%, 100 particle, it actually block out 67 particles. So only 33 leaf through the mask. So if you wear a surgical mask, you block out 75, 70, 75 particles and only 25 get through. You wear an N95 mask, only one particle get through. So if somebody cough right here, you're gonna be able to filter that. Now, you also, if you're sick, let's say if, you, if you're not sure that you're sick, 
uh, because a lot of times now, you know, a person that is infection doesn't have any symptom and they don't even know that they're sick. But if you wear a mask, it, uh, and and um, you can you can block your droplets from infect, uh, affecting others. So uh, um, if you wear a mask, it prevents ten of the of the particles from going into the environment. If you wear a surgical mask right here, it prevents fifty of the particles going to the environment. And if you wear an N95 mask, it prevents um, seventy uh, particles. Uh, so. Uh, a, a mask is better than nothing. Even a cloth mask is, be is better than nothing at this point. Um, so I, I, I uh, advocate that everyone should wear masks. And the CDC actually well, recommend wearing that on April uh, the 2nd. Um, uh, but they recommend that you wear a cloth mask, not an N95 or surgical mask. So um, are people who get sick immune from the virus? possible and highly probable, but a lot isn't known yet. The virus is new and we're really learning a lot about it. But we, there's a way now that we can test the immunity. There's a new machine that comes out that can uh, test your blood uh, to see if you develop antibodies against uh, the SARS-CoV-2. Uh, um, the test is available, it's approved, but um, I don't know how available it's going to be. Is it going to go to the hospital first before it goes to the doctor's offices? How much would it be? What would it cost? Uh, again, I want to put this down because you hear a lot about flattening the curve. And um, we can flatten the curve. How do we do that? By wearing masks, by uh, social distancing, community event cancellation, widespread community uh, uh, quarantine and border uh, closure. What we're trying to do is we're trying to, uh, and what this, this graph here, this graph here have the same number of infection, but you're just trying to buy time so the healthcare facility can take care of the sick. And it doesn't overwhelm the healthcare uh, capacity at this point. Therefore, they can save people. There's less death. Of, uh, there's, le uh, there's less deaths and they can save as many people as they can. This is what it means by flattening the curve. We want to go from here, which is without any type of uh, intervention, to here to be under the healthcare capacity. So we want to see that the number of new cases to be flattening right here, it will peak and then it will go down. And what happens going to go down is that you're going to have deaths and then you're going to have people that are recover. So when will this all end? I have this question a lot. What, you know, what needs to be done? Well, the need to, we need to have testing for all so that way we can identify who's infected, who's not infected, who's immune. We now have a blood test for immunity. Uh, we need to have effective uh, social distancing. We need to have enough uh, personal protective um, equipment for all healthcare personnel. Because if we have enough PPE, then we can be tested. Then we can have a blood test as well. Uh, we need to have enough ICU beds, enough ventilator to take care of the, the severely sick. We need to have enough ICU staff and, uh, um, to take care of the uh, sick. And, and we need to see new cases and deaths declining, like what I just said about um, flattening the curve. We're looking at probably about two or three months uh, window. I know in Virginia right now, we're on, um, we're on uh, home um, um, home lockdown at this point at, at, until June 10th. Um, so the virus, um, when would this end? The virus is the clock. It depends on the kinetic of the outbreak and sometimes it's unpredictable. Sometimes it could be two to three weeks. There may be pockets of disease outbreak that require longer social distancing like perhaps in New York, like in New Jersey, like in, Was uh, in Washington and, qu and quarantines in other areas. Now, we really don't get rid of the virus, we just control the outbreak, which we have to treat this as if it's uh, like the, um, the flu. And uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, will be here for a while. There will be a vaccine, we will develop herd immunity, and we will control this like we, we did with the flu. So what can you do to help? Uh, ensuring the public is aware of the seriousness of COVID-19. And a high degree of understanding, solidarity, and discipline is required to apply the strict personal hygiene, cough etiquette, self-monitoring, and social distancing, and community en engagement and acceptance of stringent social distancing measures to put in place, 
So we uh, and the key is to delay and reduce further spread. It is our moral responsibility to do so. So there's prevention um, that you can do um, and control the spread of, of COVID-19 in hospital and, co and long-term care facility. So that way it can slow the demand for specialized care, such as ICU, like I said, and it protects the vulnerable, like our elderly patient, our uh, patient that are uh, immunocompromised and have heart disease and lung disease. Um, you can donate blood at American Red Cross. I just saw uh, a request the other day, they need blood. So if you can do it, send food and care packages to healthcare facility and save the PPE for the healthcare professionals. Um, uh, order uh, local uh, food to support the small businesses which are hurting right now and uh, take care of yourself uh, as well because you can't take care of yourself. You can't take care of your loved one. Uh, remember when, when you're on the plane and they, uh, they talk about um, if there's an emergency, what do you do? You put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can put oxygen mask on your loved ones. Uh, uh, good news, U.S. is more, more prepared than, than ever, uh, than any country to, for a pandemic. And many more good news is that we have antiviral on the horizon and, and more on the horizon and more than uh, probably about 400 uh, um, clinical trials right now on the way. And um, this is great right here. The FDA has granted a company called Celeb to authorize and market a rapid antibody test. Antibody test is from the blood to look at, to see if who has been, in, uh, who has developed immunity to uh, um, COVID-19. So it's a drop of serum or from your plasma and it's placed, uh, how they get it, they get a, blood, a, a drop of your blood and they put it in a well in a cartridge and they get result in about 10 to 15 uh, minutes. And it has a very, very good uh, sensitivity and specificity. And the negative, however, negative results do not rule out infection. The antibody might not have had enough time to form or the virus could have had a minor amino acid mutation and, and it's not recognized uh, at this point. So false positive can occur due to cross reactivity with uh, antibodies from previous infections such as other coronaviruses, aware that the flu is actually from the coronavirus family. So if negative and with symptoms, you should be get checked again in a few days because it could be a false negative. But if you're positive, uh, you should get be confirmed with uh, uh, the swab test that I, um, um, that I uh, uh, talked about earlier. So there's another uh, treatment horizon, infusion of blood plasma uh, that uh, from, from uh, survivors, the people that have survived the uh, coronavirus and it's now we're getting their blood plasma to treat the people that are, are severely affected. This should be, um, this is from April 4th. Um, so at the FDA announced this past Friday, uh, they're doing a national study led by the Mayo Clinic um, to do an experimental plasma therapy and, uh, uh, and track how they're doing. And the American Red Cross is also going to be helping with this um, um, clinical trial. So more good news. Airlines are saying that the uh, airline, um, more good news, um, the airline must refund airfare to passengers uh, whose flights have been canceled during the outbreak. Yes, I'm one of those people. I had bought airfare to go to South Africa and uh, it was canceled because of the outbreak. And they told me that I have to use it within um, a year. But now I think I want to ask for a refund. Um, and also to enforce social distancing, Walmart announced that it will now admit customers to a store one by one with restriction that will limit the average store to roughly about 20% of capacity. So we're gonna talk about ways to boost immunity. Those that have seen my uh, webinars in the past have seen this before, but I added something new. And that's why I also have um, Donna here to talk about um, healthy eating uh, while you're uh, at home right now. But I added something new such as, um, 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 let's see on here. Um, yes, re uh, research has shown that um, you can boost up your antibody, which is uh, uh, the antibody A, which, are, which can uh, protect, increase your immunity 
by watching acts of kindness or looking at art or doing or a, a, a watching a video or doing reading, like watching a video of Mother Teresa or reading a book about kindness and compassion. And then you write about the time that you perform acts of kindness or compassion and then you engage in acts of kindness or compassion. And what is that? That could be ranging from making cloth masks, helping your neighbors who are elderly, you know, run, do grocery store runs for them, um, um, helping some uh, babysit somebody uh, who is working. When you do this, you actually boost your own uh, antibody in, in your body that will increase uh, your immunity. I also want to mention also meditation, taking deep breaths, like, well, if you take a, one deep breath, one, a one breath into your nose and for a second, and then breathe out in three seconds. So essentially, you want to have longer uh, uh, exhalation uh, phase and inhalation phase. What that does is it brings in more nitrous oxide. It, uh, you create more nitrous oxide, and nitrous oxide has been known to also uh, increase your uh, immunity um, uh, as well. Um, so you can use this crisis to try to get healthy, to protect yourself uh, and your loved one. As I talked about before, we're starting to see preponderance of severe cases in individuals, young and old, who have diabetes type 2, or who are obese, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, and with heart disease. So you can modify uh, the these condition above by decreasing inflammation um, therefore, you can um, mm. uh, raise your body mm. reserve to fight um, <coughs> infection. So now we're going to move on to our esteemed Donna Heatrick, who is our certified clinical nutritionist, a lifestyle, fitness, and nutrition. I've known Donna for a long time. She uh, is well known in the community, and so I'm so uh, grateful that she is here uh, with us today to share her knowledge. So Donna, take it over. I'm gonna make you the host and right now. Okay. All right, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, all right, great. I don't know if you can see me or not because I, I still see um, Dr. Trong, but I'm probably on. I'm gonna trust that I am. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so one of the things that uh, we're looking for are all the silver linings in this uh, crazy, crazy situation that we found ourselves in as a nutritionist. I have to tell you all that I am absolutely thrilled that more and more people are getting back in the kitchen. Uh, I hear from my clients all the time that they would love to make lifestyle changes, they want to do things differently, but they just don't have the time because of the many demands that they have to manage on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, is there a way that you can eat right now that is absolutely 100% going to keep you from getting COVID-19? I'm afraid not, unfortunately. Um, the best way we can do that is follow all the guidelines that they've been you know, presenting over and over and Dr. Trong has been talking about, wash your hands, um, shelter in place, do not go out unless you need to to and really take all those precautions. However, we can definitely um, create a stronger immune so that your body does has a better chance of fighting um, the virus if you should get it, and it'll slow down the replication of the virus um, in your body. So what do we want to do? We want to eat diversely. We want to eat from many different um, food groups, but when we're talking about this um, Virus, we're talking about managing inflammation and getting as many antioxidants into your system as possible. So every vegetable, every fruit, uh, every type of protein brings something different to the table. And so we want to make sure that you're getting a wide variety of vegetables and fruits and proteins. You want to eat your food in as natural of a state as possible. Um, I don't know what your faith is, but I like to say eating your food in a God-made state, you know, how it comes off the tree, out of the ground. Um, it really makes a huge difference because the nutritive value in that food, if it's in a natural state, is so much higher than anything that's been processed. Reducing your sugars and your processed foods. This is really huge. There have been a lot of studies done on how sugar actually reduces your immunity by something like up to 90% in the next hour after you have a sugar binge. So it really makes a huge difference. I mean, think about the 
uh, what may happen if you were uh, subjected to the virus and you just, you know, were binging out on a lot of sugar, how your body would have been able to protect you had you been eating more healthfully up to that point. It really does make a difference. And the other one is menu planning. Um, if you are planning your meals, you are going to reduce your costs, you're gonna reduce your time, you're gonna reduce your stress because you have a plan for the food and you also are only buying the food that you have a plan for. So it really um, takes care of those spontaneous and splurge um, spendings. You know, when this first went down in the beginning, um, I was still going to the grocery store a little bit and I have to say that I, I felt like everybody was buying the types of foods that you would eat for a snow day. You know, I was seeing like ice cream and packaged foods and just lots of things that, you know, you throw in the microwave, um, those kinds of things. And that's really not what we should be eating the most of right now. It really should be more foods that are in a natural state. Uh, Dr. Tron, if you're doing my slides, I'm ready for the next one. All right. Thank you. All right, so we want to eat foods with powerhouse vitamins. You know, there's been a lot out there about vitamin C. Um, Dr. Trong does IV vitamin C therapy at her rehabilitation center. Um, can't do it now, I don't think, but uh, if for someone that needs, has an autoimmune disease and needs to be boosting their immunity at any time throughout the year, vitamin IV therapy is amazing. Uh, at this time, you can supplement with a liposomal vitamin C supplement, but also eating vitamin C or getting it in a food form is a way that your body knows what to do with it. And it also comes with all these amazing additional side benefits because most fruits and vegetables, not only do they have vitamin C, but they have a lot of other phytonutrients and, and vitamins as well. So you can see here on the chart, there are a tremendous um, value or tremendous amounts of vitamin C in the um, ones I've listed. I wanna put a really big plug in for red bell peppers. Um, I love red bell peppers and a cup of red bell peppers has twice the amount of vitamin C as an orange. So, you know, you really um, should be stocking up and making sure, like this should be something that you're thinking about. Where did I get my vitamin C today? Um, and making sure that you are feeding your family um, with as many of these as possible on a regular basis. Remember, vitamin C is water soluble, so we need to do it day by day or every day. Next slide, please. All right, zinc and vitamin D. So most of us know that zinc is a powerful immune booster. There are many um, uh, over-the-counter products like the zinc lozenges and the Zycam and those types of products. Those are great. Um, these are foods that uh, also we should be including into our diet. Snacking on pumpkin seeds. If you don't like them raw, you can put them in the oven and dry roast them and put them in a... Um, like a, a nut and seed um, trail mix kind of thing. Uh, hemp seeds are great on your um, salads. The hemp hearts actually are wonderful. Um, grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, chickpeas. Um, I think that I gave um, Dr. Trong some recipes that she can send out, I think is gonna be distributing or making available. And I will post those on my um, Facebook page too for anybody that's on here that um, I invited. And uh, dry, roasting chickpeas, what a great way as a salad topper, as a snack, they're delicious. Um, you can put any seasonings on them um, that you want and um, have those for, for um, a snack. Uh, cashews are another form of a uh, good food source of zinc. Um, vitamin D, wow, this is a big one, right? Um, Making sure that you are getting out in the sunlight, you know, is, is important. Um, I will say, though, that in order to really absorb vitamin D from sun rays, you need to have about 80 to 90 percent of your body exposed for about 20 to 30 minutes, especially this time of the year where it's not real direct um, and you're just getting a little pink tinge to your skin. Also know that that vitamin D has to go through the synergistic absorption and kind of chemical transformation in your skin for you to absorb it through your cholesterol. And so when you're out like that, don't rush inside and take a power shower and scrub it off. Because if you do that, you're gonna lose um, the ability to convert that sunlight into vitamin D in your body. Um, food sources, fatty fish, tuna mackerel, salmon, 
beef liver, I know that's not a big fan favorite, but it is a good source. Cheese, everybody loves. Um, eat your eggs right now. We live in a community where we have access to a lot of farm raised eggs and they are wonderful. And something that you may not have thought about with vitamin D is your mushrooms. Um, and I listed there several um, types that are great. Um, sauteing mushrooms as a vegetable side. You can eat those with a protein. You can put them with the protein. You can throw them on your salad, uh, raw or sauteed. Next slide, please. Um, I, I can uh, send your um, recipe to other um, people that are registered as a, an email. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Glutathione, we call that the toxic mop. You know, one of the things that, one of the reasons why we want you eating lots of food with vitamin C um, is because it actually, we call that a dimmer. Um, it's actually going to reduce the potential symptoms um, and the strength of the symptoms in your body if you actually get the virus. Glutathione is a powerful, powerful amino acid that your liver actually produces, but when we come become under stress, and if you have other toxins that you're subjected to or you have a toxic overload in your body already, it makes it very difficult for your body to fight off an additional virus and particularly something like the novel virus um, like the COVID-19. So foods here that can be converted into glutathione or help your body produce it are asparagus and avocados, all your cruciferous vegetables like cabbage and Brussels sprouts and broccoli, um, spinach, garlic and chives, tomatoes, cucumbers, and then a couple of nuts, almonds and walnuts. So, wow, what an amazing, you know, do a spinach salad with some strawberries for your vitamin C and some almonds and walnuts. And if, again, you don't like them just straight up, stick them in a pan and little, uh, do a little roasting. Um, if that still doesn't make them palatable, put a little uh, organic or full, um, uh, leaded maple syrup on there just a tad to add a little bit of sweetness and, and use them that way. Um, you can also roast nuts in your oven and add some seasonings to those as well. But think about the synergistic power of putting all those vegetables together. Um, it really gives your body what it needs. Next slide, please. All right, so always have a plan, Stan. You know, always be thinking things through. Um, you know, use this time. You know, uh, Dr. Tron was talking about uh, uh, being grounded as opposed to being, you know, uh, in our homes under duress. I like the word hibernation. Um, and I, I like that during the winter time. I feel like, you know, we have a little bit more time to spend around the house. Um, I love a good snow day because it gives me a, an excuse to just be in and um, not, not have to make an excuse for it. Take this time to make those lifestyle changes that you've been meaning to make. Um, most of us are around the dinner table now. Uh, you're around the lunch table, the breakfast table, because your kids are home from school. I mean, it's a really uh, time when we're, there's a lot of togetherness and, you know, in, our in our households. When things get back to normal, the new normal, um, some of that's going to you know, uh, shift out a little bit. But I encourage everyone to um, take this time to see how you can continue to make that happen, uh, even when, when we are not under house arrest anymore. Um, when you have a plan, you reduce your spur splurge spending, you get what you need. And I don't know about you, but there's been a lot of things that aren't available <laughs> at the grocery store. They're doing a little bit better now. They're catching up. But, you know, for a little while there, there wasn't much splurging because you, you really couldn't get what you wanted. Um, if you plan for something, uh, you plan for a meal, you are going to reduce your, your waste. Um, I think there's some ridiculous number, like 40% of all vegetables and fruits that we buy end up in the garbage can because... We bought it, we didn't have a plan for it, and therefore, you know, it went bad on us. Um, and it just takes the stress out of it. Uh, if you have a plan and you're able to know that we're gonna do this for snack, we're gonna do this for dinner um, as we go through this, um, you know, stay at home period. Next slide, please. All right, so I like to take my clients through what I call nutritional bridges. Um, if you are a family that is largely you know, eats out a lot because of your lifestyle and the schedules, or if you largely eat things that come out of the freezer and go in the microwave, you know, what we're encouraging you to do is to be a little bit more nutritious right now and get food that has a lot more nutritional density to it. Uh, since you are gonna be at home and making more of your food, 
I'm giving you some ideas of things that you can do that may not be too much of a stretch from what you've been doing, but you're using nutritious raw materials, you're making it yourself. Um, and you know, we talk about meditation and being happy and how that does for your um, immune uh, globulins and, and whatnot. Um, so does nourishing your body and going through the act of nourishing your family's body. There's a lot of healing that comes with preparing food um, that you're doing in a loving way. Uh, and you're doing it intentionally and with the whole um, uh, hope of keeping everybody healthy. There's a lot of value to that as opposed to just taking something out of the freezer, slapping it in the microwave and you know sticking it on a plate. Um, here are some ideas, you know, bunless baked burgers. I'm a burger girl, love my burgers. And, but I like a burger that's a meal. I don't just put meat in a patty and throw it in a pan. I put, uh, I grate uh, zucchini and put a little bit of feta cheese and some Greek seasonings. That's my au pas Greek burger. Or maybe I want a, a, um, a garden burger. Well, I'll, I'll put peppers, chopped peppers, chopped onions, maybe some zucchini again, um, and with a, with a guacamole seasoning and a little bit of grated um, cheese. I have to go dairy free. They're awesome in a burger. They melt, you never, never know the difference that it's not dairy. Um, and I eat these without a burger, or excuse me, without a bun, put them on top of a salad. It's your protein entree, which I want to make sure that I make this point too. When we are under duress, whether it's physical or emotional, we always should increase our protein. So, you know, if you notice that when you're under duress, whether it's a lot of physical or emotional, what do we do? Hand goes in the cookie jar, right? We want sugar, we want starches, we want comfort foods. Um, and we need to be putting chicken breasts in the cookie jar because that's what we really need to help keep our blood sugars balanced and to maintain healthy adrenals. So breakfast tacos, think outside the box a little bit. Instead of, you know, just pulling a box of, of cereal out of the cover that might be loaded with a lot of sugars and refined flours, you can make tacos out of eggs and do them either on a corn tortilla or a flour tortilla. Um, you know, really be out of the box and do a crunchy, crunchy tortilla or let them use a um, a uh, tostita dip scoop and dip their eggs into that if, if that is appealing and you have little ones. Egg muffins are something that you can make ahead of time, put in the freezer and pull out. That's a great family activity too, by the way. You can take, you know, if you have four of you in your family and you have a 12, uh, 12 um, muffin pan with 12 little, you know, individual muffins, each of you can have four muffins and you do your own deal, whatever you want, want in those, which is a lot of fun. Um, use your crock pot, crock pot chili, um, tuna and chicken quesadillas. My kids, when they were little, one of their favorite um, lunches on the weekends was tuna quesadillas. And you can get flavored tunas now. You've probably seen them, barbecue and uh, lemon pepper. Uh, you just mix that tuna up with a little bit of mayo and spread it on inside of that um, the uh, flour tortilla and then brown that up in a pan, serve it with some vegetables, some chopped up or crop, um, sliced up fruit would be a great uh, lunch option or eat it for breakfast. You know, um, it, it really, uh, we can eat outside of what would be regular meals uh, if that's appealing. Burrito bowls are awesome. You know, you have a grain, you've got some vegetables, you got a protein, and you just kind of throw that all together and top it off with some guacamole, um, some uh, salsa. It's just a really, really fun option. Next slide, please. All right, bring out the dinner fairy. So I call my crock pot the dinner fairy. So um, I'm an old school school gal. Um, I really, I have a, a Instapot, but I just haven't fallen in love with it like I am with my crock pots. Um, and I mean, literally, it's not unusual for me to have two and three crock pots going on my countertop at the same time. Um, when I put it, my food in the crock pot at six o'clock in the morning, my there's no stress for me about what's for dinner because it's done. All I've got to do is set the timer or, um, you know, if I come up out of my gym or in out of my office, I have a home-based business, make sure that I'm not overcooking anything. Uh, and there's just something wonderful about being able to smell that as it's cooking. Um, that's one of the things I think I don't like about the Instapot. There's no odor of it. But it's a, the Instapot's amazing for families who need to have dinner on the table in half an hour and they haven't defrosted anything. Uh, I'm a planner, I'm a prepper, so the crock pot really works really great for me. 
you can go online and you can find wonderful, you know, not your mother's crock pot recipes that are so amazing. Um, you can make crock pot chicken enchiladas. You can throw a whole organic uh, farm raised chicken in your crock pot with some bone broth and let that um, on for eight hours on low. I do that at night. So I'll, I'll take a frozen farm raised chicken out of my freezer at 10 o'clock at night, put it in my crock pot, put in 32 ounces of bone broth, season it a little bit, put the lid on, and I put it on eight hours on low. And I wake up the next morning and it's like, it's Christmas morning. The thing is done, ready to go. And I can either eat it that way or I can use it in other recipes that I'm preparing. But there are a tremendous amount of recipes. I just encourage you to go online and find what your family likes. Um, do your menu planning, do your grocery list, and, and you've got this. It will really make a big difference. Make it easy. I think that might be my last slide. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, it is. So I mentioned that there is a coronavirus testing in our area. Thank you, uh, Donna. That was a wonderful you are welcome. Uh, presentation. I actually I have a couple of questions. So but I wanted uh, our participant to ask first. So I'm okay. gonna, I just have a couple more slides and we'll be done. So okay. um, better, uh, so if you are getting any offers or any emails or see anything on Facebook about home testing, um, it, it's, um, uh, do, do, do not do it because it's too risky to try to, uh, um, try to sample the, um, the, the virus yourself at home. You may not do it correctly uh, and you're just wasting uh, your money. So you should go to a facility that knows what they're doing, that able to swap uh, for the samples for you. So Better Med Urgent Care, that they're on uh, Plank Road. This is their phone number, or you can go to this uh, website. You can actually make an appointment online as to when you can come in. Uh, and it's called curbside testing. So you uh, pick a date, a time, and they come, uh, and you drive through the, their parking lot and uh, they will do the test for you. It, it will be billed to insurance and, uh, um, and uh, they will tell you exactly what your co-pay is or your co-payment is. And if you don't have insurance, I believe they said it's about $200. But please call this number uh, to find out. So also beware of scams too uh, that are uh, um, be, uh, be capitalizing on fears and anxiety um, at this point. And, and so the FDA sent warning letters to seven companies warning them to stop advertising fraudulent cures, cures and treatment. Who are they? Vital Silver, uh, uh, Quiescent Aromatherapy, Zephyr, uh, Guru Nana, Vivify Holistic Clinic, Herbal Amy, and actually the Jim Baker show. They are touting uh, teas, essential oil, tinctures, and colloidal silver as um, uh, treatment uh, for uh, COVID-19. So be aware of this. So I want to end that we're all in this together. The pandemic can seem overwhelming, but in truth, every person can help slow down the spread of COVID-19. You, By doing your moral duty, you can make a big difference to your health, and that of others, and we can flatten the curve. The sooner we do this together in our solidarity, solidarity, we can get back to our life. So I want to end with Tony, another Tony Robbins uh, quote. When you are grateful for anything that you have at this point, fear disappears and abundance appears. We may be thinking that we're locked down, we can't do we like, what we can, but we also, we also should think about what we're grateful for uh, we have our family, we have our health, um, and we should uh, think about the people that are uh, in the front line, the healthcare workers, and, and the people that are not doing so well right now, and all the, the people that uh, have died from COVID-19. So we're, we want to make this uh, um, an interactive session, so I will uh, unmute, unmute the participant here, see if I can do this. Um, Uh-huh. All right. Uh, I don't think I can mute you all, but go under the chat box to type, uh, the chat box is, uh, to type your questions if you can. Uh, I thought I could unmute, but I can't. 
unmute everybody. Let me see. Because I, I, I like to know what your concerns are and what, um, what are your concerns. Uh, and let me go under the chat box. Can somebody type something under the chat box? Donna, are you able to type something under the chat box? All I'm seeing is you. I don't have, oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yep, here we go. Are you seeing me or are you seeing yeah. the chat box? I'm seeing you, I just got the chat box, I pulled it up. Yeah, I'm not seeing the I'm, chat box. What does the chat box say? It's on the very bottom of your page. All right, hold on. I'm just, I'm sending it right now. I'm sending one. Do you see my comment? All right, I got it. Okay, all right, here it is. Yep, all right. Now, as everyone that is here, can you type something in your the chat box uh, for any questions? Don't be shy, we're, we're here and um, so please uh, type something in the chat box and we'll be here. I, I know that at least uh, I can start with, um, and Donna and I can actually see the chat box uh, right now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I have a, t a question, you mentioned about vitamin D. Can you yes. go over that again about how long of exposure, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how long you need to sit outside for vitamin D. Uh, and and uh, you said you had to sit outside, but don't go in right away and take a shower. So can you uh, clarify on that? Um, sure. Um, so when you sit outside to get, you know, people say I'm getting my vitamin D, you know, and they're out for like two minutes, you are not actually um, exposing yourself long enough if you're, if you're all covered up to actually create vitamin D through the cholesterol um, synergistic you know, chemical exchange that happens. You have to expose your body up to 20 minutes and your body really needs to be exposed like you know, 20 to 30 minutes, just about to your time when you get, uh, when you get that pink tinge. We don't want to get sunburned, but you don't want to put sunscreen on because it blocks the absorption of the sun rays to make vitamin D. Then just as importantly as that, you don't want to run inside if say you're sweaty. Say you went and you mowed your lawn and you took your shirt off if you're a guy. You don't want to then go get in the shower right away and scrub it all off because you would be, uh, Take, you will be removing the oils in your skin where that chemical reaction is taking place. So, so you want to leave, leave it be in place for at least an hour or so after you've been exposed. Does that make sense? Right, right. Ah, yeah. that, that yeah. makes sense. Uh -huh. it makes, it, it's just so, I say, people tell me all the time, oh, I don't, I don't need to take vitamin D. I don't need to be concerned about eating vitamin D foods. I'm outside all the time. Well, first of all, if you are dark skinned and tan already, you're not going to be getting, you're not going to be absorbing um, as much. And then secondly, if you're not doing what I just described, um, then you're not going to be getting enough. It's a lot harder to get your vitamin D from being out in the sun than most people realize. Oh, that makes sense. Right. That, yeah. That, that makes sense uh, there. Um, we have a, a question here. Thank you for that question, by the way. Uh, sure. so we have access to your slides. I couldn't get all the info on some of them before you moved on. That was great. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, yes, um, if you, you, uh, this is actually on uh, my Facebook uh, uh, Live and that uh, you can actually um, uh, access the recording of this. So we'll, we'll send out uh, the, um, a, a link to the recording and you can see all the slides uh, there as well. And also the link to the previous uh, recording um, uh, as well. Um, any other uh, question? I see, uh, I still see, see some uh, people still 
on uh, the call. So uh, don't be shy. Type in the uh, chat box. You have any question, uh, Donna? Um, I don't think so. I think you you covered it. You did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for providing updates like this. It's just it's very valuable. I think it helps take a lot of the fear out of things. Um, we feel a little bit more in control. Um, and I feel that's how I feel about the food factor myself too. I feel like it's something that I can do for myself. So I um, you know feel like you are are um, more in control. And I think that's part of why we've been so fearful during this. We we just it's the unknown. Right, right. And I and I sense that when this came on because I, I see that in my patient and right. and all the misinformation and the hysteria and then turning on the TV and you all the media are just really uh, creating um, kind of a chaos and, and um, increasing anxiety more and confusion. Uh, and that, that's what I wanted to do. This is a time for, for, uh, for us to step up and help as many people as uh, we can, um, as much as we can. And, um, and the webinar is actually, uh, I was told that the webinar is also going to be under our, our website, under patient uh, resources um, as well. But this is a time where we, we, we can help each other. And this is my, what I see as my, uh, my contribution to the community, to my patient, to anybody, not just my patient alone, but, but anyone um, during this uh, period of uh, an unsurreal, unprecedented uh, time that uh, we should all come together and that together we can really flatten the curve and change this. And, uh, but not, not everybody know that they can actually be part of the solution um, at, at this point. And um, I know that our life is being, um, you know, turned upside down and we're at home, but m maybe at home we, we can really think about things that we usually don't do that we're doing. We're spending more family time. We're getting back to the uh, old old ways of doing things. I'm I'm doing. I'm playing um, card uh, board games with my kids, and I'm uh, cooking meals. You know, th there are things that I'm doing now that I never thought I'll be doing. It's like I'm counting. I'm counting the squares on my toilet paper. <laughs> Uh, I'm counting uh, the squares of my toilet paper when I'm using it. And my my one of my dear patient Elijah uh, actually bought me a toilet paper about a week ago because he heard that I was running low. And uh, uh, God bless him, you know, uh, bought me two rolls of toilet paper. Um, things that I do, like you know, I like yesterday I was cooking like you know, like like, like you. I was I had two <laughs> ovens going and right. you know, and the stove going all, all at once and cooking uh like I've never cooked before. Um uh, <laughs> cleaning my house now. Oh my goodness, I, you know, I gotta clean my house and you know, one room at a time. Right. Uh now too and, and using a whole uh, using a CVS L'Oreal kit to color my hair. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to figure out how to cut my hair or just let it grow. Uh, now I, I, you know, I haven't seen anybody and I, I am sorry, I can't unmute you. I don't know if I could, but um, what, what are the things you're doing right now that you haven't done before? Donna, I, uh, oh, Donna what, what are the things, yeah, what are the things uh, you're doing right now? Uh, cleaning my house. <laughs> my, my, my housekeeper is older and I told her to stay home. So yeah, I'm back to cleaning again. And like you said, it's room to room. You know, one of the awesome things about being so fortunate to have a housekeeper for many, many years is that everything's done at one time. You know, you, you come home or you're done with your day and it's all done. Now it's like bathroom by bathroom and I do the floors and then I do the countertops and your house never quite feels totally clean because by the time you get the bathrooms done, the floors are dirty and, <laughs> but, <laughs> so, but yeah, I would say that's it. I mean, obviously as a nutritionist, the food piece for me has been in place and I'm just kind of continuing on. I mean, we definitely, um, we, we have eaten takeout food one time in the past month. Um, I feel a little bit of bad about, you know, in terms of not supporting small businesses, in that respect, but I guess I we I just have really hunkered down and uh, I'm I'm really you know doing it all myself. So I guess the main thing would be the cleaning part. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, no, I uh, I I hear you. I, I I try to order some food too, but I kind of like uh, cooking at home. So um, it's five oh six, and I don't see anybody typing anymore. And we uh, believe it or not, we still have uh, uh, people um, on the line um, at this point. And so, um, um, what what uh, what what concerns and what question have you? notice uh, or hear from uh, your client um, that you can um, bring up? Um, I think the, the big thing is, um, for me, it's supplementation. Um, they want to know um, if they uh, want to supplement with vitamin C, um, how much should they take? Um, and it's, you know, what's being recommended is a thousand milligrams in, excuse me, 2000 milligrams a day in divided doses. Um, so it'd be a thousand milligrams um, uh, once in the morning and another thousand milligrams in the afternoon. For some people, um, a thousand milligrams of vitamin C can give them a rumbly tummy. Uh, and if that's the case, then split it up and do 500 milligrams four times a day. Um, and then of course, if you do get the virus, um, that would increase a lot. I mean, you could be taking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C every hour. Um, when your body is under the stress of an illness, your, uh, the body's um, ability to tolerate or the toleration of vitamin C increases just dramatically. And so using vitamin C as an immune supporter, um, as well as helping you to lessen the symptoms, so they want to know about those things. Also, vitamin D, uh, how much to take of that, forms of supplements. Um, now the liposomals are very popular because the absorption in the body is, is a lot um, better. So looking for something like that or just a, a packet of emergency is fantastic um, you know, to get vitamin C. Um, eat an orange. Have a grapefruit. You know, um, Have a, a, a whole red pepper, but mostly it's been those kinds of things, uh, those kinds of questions that have been directed to me as to what should I do, what should I take? Um, so here, here we have a question. Um, all right, Jerry Hetrick, you better be taking your liposomal vitamin C. That, that's my youngest <laughs> daughter. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Blecka, hi Jennifer. Would, vitamin, would that vitamin C not be appropriate for, yes it would. Um, and again, if there's any loose stool or complaining about their tummy being a little funny, just reduce the amount they take at, at one time. Like don't do a thousand milligrams, um, but do 500 so that the absorption of it um, is a little, is not quite, it wouldn't be overwhelming to their system. But again, like what's the worst that could happen? They'll have a great bowel movement. So, you know, uh, it's not like it can hurt them. But yeah, I would say for a 12 or older, I would definitely go with the 2000 milligrams um, in divided doses. Well, that's a, that's a great uh, recommendation there. I want to kind of chime in on uh, uh, something about um, getting food delivery or um, in groceries. So when you buy groceries uh, and you bring the bags home, and you put it on the, the counter, make sure you have one side of the counter as the dirty side, one side of the counter as the clean side, when you already clean the Clorox. So when you bring the food home, when it's in the bag, put it on, pour it out on the dirty side, and then you wipe, uh, you wipe the boxes down with the Clorox, or you wipe, or, uh, uh, and is it like uh, fruits and vegetable, wash those fruits and vegetables with, uh, uh, actually, probably it's open water because you don't know whether in the in the grocery store somebody that could be infectious had grabbed used their hand and uh, grabbed that fruit and put that down uh, right. too. So uh, you have to kind of wash your 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 vegetables and and your fruit unless that that vegetables is in a bag then it's protected. But you make sure that when you bring it home. Cut, you know, cut the bag and put it and, and wash it, wash the fruits and vegetables and then clean uh, boxes with uh, Clorox. And then once you do that, you can put it on the clean side. If you order food delivery, uh, then um, if you order food delivery, then when, when it's delivered in the box, then take it out of the box 
put it on your plate and zap it in the in the uh, microwave for uh, two minutes. All right. So just a little caution on that. Always, always wash your hands. I I, I now can say that since uh, coronavirus, you know, I wash my hands so much that my hands are cracking. Uh, right. And I use yeah. I use uh, lotion like almost every five minutes uh, um, as well. So we have uh, we have this. So we have another uh, question from Jerry. Is that uh, is there a difference of vitamin C intake between cuties, uh, grapefruit, and oranges? What does that mean? <laughs> um, she means like if you eat a you know the little cuties or like the little tangerines. How oh. is the difference in the amount of vitamin C? And I, and I, yes, there is. Be, just based on size, there's going to be way more vitamin C in your grapefruit or your orange than in a smaller piece of fruit. Um, also, the other thing that impacts how much vitamin C is in a piece of fruit is uh, how long it sat in the grocery store. You know, how old is it? Because vitamin C, again, is water soluble and it oxidizes. So if it's an older piece of fruit, it, it doesn't have um, as much as, as a fresher piece of fruit. So it's, it's a little hard, like when you look up online, like how much vitamin C is in an orange, it's going to be variable. Whereas if you do a packet of emergency, you know you're going to get 1000 milligrams of vitamin C in that packet of emergency. So for a time like this, if you are, I, I'm not discouraging eating the fruit at all, do, do, do. But if you are not a big fruit eater or you are concerned whether or not you are getting 60 milligrams of vitamin C or 150, go with a liposomal vitamin C product or a emergency because it's standardized and you know you're getting a set amount. Well, that's uh, that's actually good. I didn't know that bell peppers were red bell yeah. peppers. You said uh, yeah. full of vitamin C, and I love red bell peppers. So do I. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, so I, I can eat it plain. Yeah. Do you do you see the baby ones now? Two of those. They are like so yeah. they're the little scoopers. So I love those because people always need a. Uh, I'd say they need a shelf for their dips. They need a, a dipper, and usually those dippers are crackers or chips or something that's a lot of. Uh, it's processed. It's high in carbohydrate. So I encourage using you know little mini carrots or carrot slices, celery, and those little bell peppers that are tiny, the little baby ones. You just cut the top off and clean out the little bit of seeds and then stuff it full of guacamole, stuff it with some hummus. It's, they're amazing. Um, I love doing those, they're, they're really fun. Just using those, using those little mini peppers as a scoop. Oh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really great. Yeah, right. I, I, you know, what, what, how, what do you recommend? I mean, since if you're gonna eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, you're gonna have to go to the grocery store frequently. Um, you do. And so if you're going out, of course, wear your rubber gloves or your plastic gloves, wear your mask, or I do Instacart. You know, I'm a big Instacart girl. Instacart goes to Aldi's, they go to Lytle, they go to Giant, they go to um, Wegmans, um, Shipped does Super Target. Um, and I think they do Weiss Market. So there is a minimum order. You have to order a minimum of $30, I think, um for them to do a you know a delivery but um that's where the menu planning comes in because you know i like i just did an order today and I, and wegmans i put my order in at 10:05. they gave me a five hour window for delivery and it was in my garage at 11 42. so they're, wow. they're really working hard you know um and i tip my my shoppers well <laughs> because they're they're out there you know, for me, you know, they're, they're risk taking a risk by being in the grocery store. You know, I, I'd rather not go. Um, I will go if I have to, but you're right. Those perishables don't last as long um, as the other, you know, stored foods. So, but you, you can do a once a week to get your perishables. Um, you know, if you plan for it and you know what you're going to do with everything, you can, you can do a once a week once shop with your perishables. Right, right, yeah, and I and I actually ordered from Instacart uh, from Wegman about yeah. about a couple of days ago, and that's uh that's great uh, too. Yeah. So thank God, uh, and I'm glad you said tip 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 your shoppers because you know yeah. they are uh, out there 
they uh, are for you. Now, mm. uh, what, when do you decide to shop from Wegman or Aldi's or Le mm. Lidl? You know? Yeah. You know, I like, I like uh, a lot of my proteins um, from Wegmans because I can get a lot of grass fed. I can get um, uh, organics uh, on a regular basis um, that I trust. Um, I love Aldi's for their produce. And most every, anytime I go into Aldi's, I can get those little mini bell peppers. I can get organic broccoli. I can get organic romaine, uh, organic red uh, mini tomatoes. So, you know, and Aldi's is close to me. So I can pop in there for a real quick veggie refill midweek if I need to. And here's what was interesting. When this all went down about two, three weeks ago when the grocery stores were just completely annihilated and cleaned out, Aldi was well stocked. It seemed like everybody hit Wegmans, hit the larger stores and Aldi's, it, I could get everything I needed. So um, it was nice to know that I had that as a fallback. And from a financial standpoint, it's a lot cheaper um, at Aldi's than it is Wegmans. You know, um, I'm fortunate that I can afford to shop at Wegmans a large part of the time, but not everybody can. So I'm, I'm always keeping an eye out where my clients can find healthy food at a reasonable cost. Uh, and Aldi's and Lidl definitely offer that. And, and, and when you shop Instacart, is every item that is available on, uh, in the store available on Instacart? Um, if it's listed, it is, you know, typically when a, a couple of weeks ago, when it was really crazy, um, it was, they didn't have a chance to kind of keep up with their Instacart availability. So they would put that something was available and you would check it to put in your cart. And then when the shopper shopped, they'd let you know that it wasn't available or, oh. if, you know, that was happening a lot. Um, now, not so much. They've been able to stock up on their inventory and, pretty much seems like if it's there, because like when I shop Wegmans, it'll actually have a, a line through it and I'd say out of stock, you know, toilet paper and paper towels. You still can't get at Wegmans, you know, but you can get, you can get toilet tissue, a four pack of toilet paper at Aldi's pretty much every day now, but they're limiting you to one purchase at a time. Now I shop for a shut in neighbor who is uh, recovering from a, 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 uh, uh, injure or from a surgery and they allowed me to put her things and pay for it to get a separate receipt and they allowed me to get toilet paper for her and they allowed me to get toilet paper for myself um oh. and it, they have like the shields up at their um checkout so you are you know she, you're protected the cashier is protected um and I'm amazed at how many people are wearing masks now. It's not weird anymore. I, I understand what your friend was saying because about a week ago or, you know, it was that way. But now I don't even, you know, I don't get any weird looks wearing a mask when I'm out at this point. Most people have them on. I think most people are looking at those people that don't have masks and say, where's your mask? D did you wear your mask? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. And it matched Good. my outfit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Is it that, just yeah. happened is, too. <laughs> is, is it is is it a cloth mask? It's a cloth one. Yes, my um, daughter's mother-in-law made that made it, uh, and it's gray and white polka dots on one side and and stripes on the other. And so I just wash it um, every time I wear it. Um, if I do wear it multiple times throughout the day, I'm sp I'm spraying it with an essential oil blend, um, which smells really nice and um, you know may help with killing anything that it is on there but i am washing it daily oh wow that's wonderful and so um yeah so it's 5 20 thank you thank you thank you for being with me on uh this uh webinar and i look forward to probably having you back and just um, maybe some ideas uh, of any other ideas you may have and would la love to tap into your uh, knowledge. I learned something uh, today. Right. Always good. Always try, try, try to learn something new for the day. And I've actually learned a lot about with the past three weeks and I've never ever learned, especially about, you know, microbiology and science and epidemiology and all, all this stuff. So it's kind of nerdy stuff, 
Uh, right. But uh, kind of uh, keep us, uh, keep me on uh, my toes. So uh, thank you very much. We will, I will be back next uh, Sunday, uh, same time at four uh, o'clock uh, Eastern uh, time for updates. And uh, we'll probably do something like uh, meditation and breathing. Um, so um, I hope to have you back soon, Donna. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.